Hi, I'm Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art. We've had a lot of people write in to us and ask if I would do a YouTube video on how to make your own wedding cake or how to do a basic wedding cake that beginners uh, could do at home. So I've prepared this three-tiered cake and for the next 15 or 20 minutes I'm going to run through right from the beginning to the end after you've baked the cake, icing it, covering it with fondant and using some molds to create some easy and effective decorations. This cake is a, um, a 12, a 9 and a 6 inch cake and the 12 and 9 together will feed about 100 people and this top tier can be kept for the first anniversary. You can scale this cake down or up depending on how many people you'd like. As long as you keep about three inches in uh, difference between your uh, tiers, you'll be fine. So if you wanted to go up to a 16 inch, your next one would be maybe a 13 and then maybe a 10. And if you wanted to add a fourth tier, you can do that too. So it's an easy cake to make. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. A couple tips. I have three other uh, YouTube videos out that would help reinforce what I'm going to teach today. One of them, I have a DVD or excuse me, a YouTube out on how to slice a cake and fill it and ice it. I have a YouTube on how to cover a cake with fondant and I have a YouTube on how to color the gum paste flowers, the pre-purchased flowers, so that you can make them your own design, your own colors and you can accent them the way you want. I'll be doing all that in this YouTube but the other ones will really reinforce and give you even more depth uh, of education. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Begin by using a long serrated knife and cut the top off the cake and use a cardboard to slide under it and remove the excess cake. Flip the cake over. Use buttercream icing to create a thin layer in between the two cakes. And I've placed the cake on a cake circle or a, or a corrugated cake pad that's the same size as the cake. So I have a 12 inch cake and a 12 inch pad. Need a small portion of fondant into a long rope and this is going to create a dam around the edge of the cake so that you can put a filling in and it won't squish out. Attach the dam right on the outside edge of the cake. And then use whatever type of filling you want on the inside. I'm going to use a raspberry. and place the next tier right on top of the first one. Ice the sides and the top with buttercream. This only needs to be a thin layer because you're going to be covering it with fondant. And you don't have to worry about crumbs. Make sure you ice right down to the board so it seals the cake in and no air gets in and dries out your cake. Okay, your cake is now ready to cover with fondant. The easiest thing to do from here is to place this in the refrigerator for about one hour or in the freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes just so the cake firms up. So begin by kneading some white fondant until it's soft and pliable. Sprinkle your work area with a little bit of confectioner's sugar. Keep the fondant moving. Don't, don't roll very long before you move it. When the fondant gets larger, you can actually pull the, wet, the rolling pin across it rather than rolling and it will start stretching it for you. The diameter of the fondant has to be the diameter of the cake plus four inches for each side. So I have a 12 inch cake 
I have to add eight inches to that. So I have to have at least 20 inches round of fondant. All right. Use a smoother and smooth the top. Roll the fondant over your rolling pin very light lightly. And then just drape it over the cake. Begin by smoothing the top very lightly to pull any air bubbles out from underneath. And go around the outside edge with your hands to adhere it to the cake. And then work your way down. Just open the folds up and just push down and the fondant will stick to the buttercream icing. I use the scissors to cut off any excess. And then I'll use a knife to trim it. I'm just using a smoother on the side. Make sure that it's stuck to the cake all the way around. And then I'll use a spatula or a knife and I'll cut it flush with the bottom of the board. I like to use the palm of my hand and just go around the outside edge to make a nice slope. Make sure it's smooth. You can smooth the top a little bit and just make sure the sides are all smoothed out. If you have an air bubble, you can use a little straight pin and push it into the bubble and then the smoother will push the air out through the hole. There. So we have the 12 inch layer all done and now we'll show you how to stack the cake. Take another piece of fondant and roll it into a large log. Put a little sugar down on your work surface. And I'm going to roll this into a flat piece. Using a knife or a pastry wheel, cut one flat edge and then roll up the fondant very loosely and then place it around the cake. Unroll it around the cake and bring it right up to the edge of the cake. Use your smoother to go back and press it down so it goes right up to the board. And then where it joined in the back, just press it together to make a seam. And then just use a spatula or a knife and cut it flush with the edge of the board. This gives you a nice finished presentation on the cake. Excuse me, we're going to stack the cake next. Now we have our 12 inch uh, tier has been covered with fondant and it's got the buttercream icing and it's got a filling in between it. Now we're ready to stack our wedding cake. So the first thing I do is I take a look at my, my covering of my cake and I decide where's the front of the cake and where's the back of the cake. And I just put a little pin, a little toothpick right into the foam board to denote the back of the cake. Now this wedding cake, I'm going to offset the tiers rather than putting them right on top of each other symmetrically, I'm going to offset it. I'm going to bring them all toward the back of the cake. So my next tier is 12, uh, a 10 inch cake. So I have a 10 inch circle and I sort of set it on the cake the way I want it to look. And then I'll know where approximately I'm going to put my four dowel rods. The dowel rods are an important part of constructing the cake to make sure that your cake doesn't lean or tip over uh, as it sits. So I know exactly where I'm going to put this. So I've marked three little holes where I'm going to put the uh, dowels and I've already got a hole ready to go here. Here's the poly dowels that we sell uh, that can be cut to the length needed for your cake. And they come 16 inches and they're very, very sturdy. That we also make a yellow one that's smaller that we'll use on the top tier. So I've cut four of them the same height. The best thing to cut them is a strong pair of scissors or um, the, the easiest thing is a pair of uh, pruning scissors that you would use on small tree branches. And just push those right down into the cake. I'm going to remove my toothpick where I want my dowel. I'm going to push it right through the fondant and into the cake. And you need at least four under every tier. If I was doing a big 18 or 20 inch cake, I might use six or eight. But four of them will do. So those go down and they sit on the bottom board. Now when I take my 10 inch cake and I set that on this cake, 
the pressure of the 10 inch cake won't squash the 12 inch cake below it. It'll sit on top of the, the dummies. And I have my 12 inch cake ready to go. We've already covered this one with um, satin ice or fondant. And I know that the back is here. And you can see on this cake that I've already got my dowels in and I use the smaller buttercream colored dowels for the top tier. They don't need to be as large for a small tier. And I know that this is the back of my cake. So I'm going to put a spatula under there and we know where the back of the cake is. And we're going to set that down. Just turn that a little bit. And you can move it a little bit if you have to. Now remember when we covered the, the cake with fondant it was already sitting on a board the exact same size. Uh, just a quarter inch cardboard. So this 10 inch cake is already sitting on a quarter inch cardboard. So now these dowel rods push down and they rest on the quarter inch cardboard in between here. That sits on the pillars that are inside this tier which then go down to the bottom tier. So the pressure goes from from the dowel to the board to the dowel to the board and there's no pressure on the cake itself. And then we're going to put the top tier on. And something I didn't do the first time, but just to show you, you can do it if you want. If you really want to be sure that that tier sticks, one tier sticks to the other, you can put a little bit of buttercream and that will work as a glue. Now I have my, my top tier is ready to go and you can see that that is also on a cardboard. And that one is going to go right on the top. And again, I want it to be toward the back of the cake. And now I'll take a look at the front and make sure everything's lined up just the way I want it. And there you go. Now these boards on the bottom in this case will be covered with the decoration we're going to do. If you didn't want any border on the bottom or if you were going to use a very, very tiny border, you'd have to make sure that fondant goes right down um, to your plate that you're working on when you cover it. In this case, we let the board show a little bit and I'm not worried about that because we're going to be covering it. So now the cake is stacked and it's ready to decorate. Now we're ready to decorate the cake. And to make this an easy project and a really beautiful cake, we're going to use three different molds to mold the decorations that go on the bottom and on the sides of the cake. I'm going to use the Karen Davies Alice Lace Mold, which gives me a nice wide ribbon for the top and a narrower uh, lace ribbon for the, uh, for the top tier. I'm going to use the Karen Davies Piped Rose Mold, and I'm going to use that for a bottom border. And then I'm going to use the uh, Global Sugar Art Rose Border Mold also for the bottom, just so that we have a small border on the bottom that doesn't overpower the cake. So I'll show you how to mold each one of these. I'll show you how we apply it to the cake, and uh, you'll be ready to make your own wedding cake. I'm going to begin with some either gum paste or a mixture of 50% gum paste and 50% of fondant and you just knead them together. The difference is if you use all gum paste it will harden on the cake and as you're cutting it you'll have to cut through it, it'll break. If you use a 50-50 mixture of fondant and gum paste you'll be able to cut right through it. But it stretches a little bit more and it's a little bit harder to work with if you're a beginner in cake decorating. So to begin with I'm going to roll out the paste and I'm going to do this smaller border first. So I want a piece that's maybe about a half inch in diameter. Anytime you have any leftover, just put it in a bag to keep it sealed. I've got a little puff with cornstarch and I'm just going to lightly cornstarch that mold. And then I'm just going to dump that right out and that way it doesn't really fill the cavities. Okay, this isn't a really large mold, uh, so I don't need this rope to be very big. And I'm just going to follow the contour of the mold. All right, and then have a little bit of Crisco or some sort of a vegetable shortening handy. Put it on your fingers and just push that into the mold. and use both hands. What I like to do is 
I, I joke about building a little mountain range in the middle, but that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm pushing it to the outside edge and then pushing any excess up. And I'm going to be cutting that ridge off. It makes it easier to cut off if it's all gathered in one place. Remove any excess. So it doesn't have to be perfectly to the edge yet. Right now my, my focus is to get rid of the extra. So I'm going to use a palette knife and again a little bit of shortening and this will help cut through that extra um, fondant gum paste mixture. Now start in the center of the mold, not on the end. If you start on the end you'll pull all the product out of the mold. So always start in the center and I'm, notice I'm holding the top with my fingers and I'm holding it in place as I cut. Just follow the little, and that's all the excess that'll come off. And if you're right-handed like I am, just turn the mold, put a little more shortening, and go in the other direction. There. Put a little bit more shortening. I'm not using a lot, just enough so that it doesn't stick to my fingers. And now I'm pushing it down flush with the edges of the mold and completely filling that in. And I have no excess paste to worry about now because I've cut it all off. There, that's all pushed down. I can roll over it to make it nice and even. And these will pop right out. I don't know if we can get a good close-up shot of that mold. And you can see the detail. If you're not happy with the detail on the mold, it's as easy as putting it back in the mold. And just pushing it down again with your finger. And then you'll be sure you get all the details. There we go. Oops. And you'd be able to see all the detail in that mold. Okay, so both of these um, molds will be done the exact same way. The larger uh, lace band and the narrower one. And then we're going to attach it to the cake. So I'm going to move the cake over to the side here. And this little band is going to go on the top tier around the top. I like to use a hem marker a lot in cake decorating because it can, it can uh, make a mark exactly where I want something to sit on the cake. So I'm basically going to measure here and I've decided where I want the top of my decoration to sit. And I've already adjusted this little lever right where I want that to be. So I'm just going to make a couple very, very tiny marks that you'll never see, especially once the fondant is over it. But this will guide me as to where this has to line up. So I'm going to then flip this over and I'm going to wet the back. This is just a water brush or you can use a little paint brush with some water. Don't make it too wet, you just want it damp. And that will work like a glue and it will stick this gum paste fondant mixture right to the cake. Okay, now the other important thing is we decided earlier that the back of the cake was where my toothpick was. So I'm going to start by decorating the front of the cake. So I want this piece to be right square on the front so there'll be no seams in the front of my cake. So I know my front is right here and that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to put this right up and you can see that it will stick right to the cake. And I'm going right up to my little marks. There. And just gently push it on the cake. Okay, so I have one done. Now I would make a second one and I would do the same thing around the back and then my top border will be 
will be in place. And then we're going to pearlize it and we're going to do a bottom border. Okay, so I've used the same mold and I've molded the wider uh, bands of lace just like we did the first ones where I cut them flush and I pressed them down and I unmolded them. So these are going to go at the top of the bottom tier to reflect what we did at the top tier. So I'm going to use the same method. I'm going to use my water brush at the top. And then just a little bit on the bottom edge. It doesn't take a lot. And I know the back of the cake is right back here. And here's my front. So I want to get that piece right on the front of the cake. Okay, and just press that in place. And I've gone ahead and made several of these pieces so that I can do the whole cake. Now, when you, when you want to make sure that it's really pressed on, you can add a little bit of water and just push the edges in. That will help it stick. Okay, we're going to flip this one. Add some water to this piece and I'll show you how to join two pieces together. Alright, so we're going to start right at this edge. I like to make sure that I have a nice square edge to deal with. And I'm going to put that right up to that edge. There, press them in place. And then when you get down here, you can just use your fingers and pull them together. Just pinch the top. And really from a distance, when this wedding cake is sitting on a table at a reception, you're not going to notice those joins. And almost any wedding cake that has molded pieces on it is going to have these little joins. Some people will put a little flower or something there to cover it, but I really don't think it's a distraction at all. So that's how the second um, layer is done. And we would go ahead and we would do the back as well. So now you have the, the top decorations on your top tier and your bottom tier done. Now we're going to mold the rose layer for the second one. And this is the Karen Davies pipe rose border. This is done the exact same way. Incidentally, if you have trouble unmolding any of these, if your fondant is too soft or your gum paste fondant mixture is too soft, um, you can put them in the freezer for maybe five minutes and pop them out and they'll come right out. Usually if you put a little bit of cornstarch in them first and then dump it out, you'll be fine. So I just made that long enough to fit. Put a little shortening on my fingers. And again, I'm going in from both sides. I'm making that little mountain in the middle. And then put a little bit of shortening on a palette knife or a, or a little sharp paring knife. And make sure to hold it as you cut toward yourself. I guess that's why I use a palette knife. I may have cut myself too many times using a paring knife. <laughs> okay. And then just fill that right in. There. I roll it on the back to make sure it's flat and that way when I put it on the cake it adheres directly to the cake and I've got a nice flat surface. And then pop that out. And that is now ready to go on the cake. And I have some others all made ahead. When you make them ahead just put them on a board and put them inside of a large uh, Ziploc bag and then they'll stay nice and flexible. Same process. We're going to flip these over, add a little bit of water. Look for the front of my cake, which is right here. And I'm going to add that border right like that. 
and we're going to go ahead and add a second one. And you will notice that she designed these molds so that when you put them end to end, they sort of interlock. So you actually can't see the join. Very clever design. I really like Karen's products. And we'll put the third one on. So maybe we'll go in this direction. Just push that right in so it fits under the other one. There we go. There. How easy is that? Okay. So we now we have our rose border done. And now we're going to move on and we're going to do the bottom border on each of these. Yep. Now we're going to make the border. This is the GSA rose border mold. And we're going to mold that for the bottom of this tier and the bottom of the top tier. Now this is a small mold. It's very thin and it's more delicate. So this mold will have to be put in the freezer for about five minutes after you, um, you put the paste in it. Now this time you don't need to cornstarch this at all. Just again, make a little rope of your 50-50 paste or your gum paste. Put a little shortening on my fingers so I can push that in. And again, I'm going from both sides and I'm making sure that that's really pushed in well so that the little roses in that mold get filled out. Okay, make sure there's a little shortening on there. Start in the middle and work your way to the outside edge. There. I'm just going to push all that right and make sure that's all inside the cavity. And that's nice and flat. Now from here I would pop this in the freezer for three to five minutes and then you'll be able to unmold that and they'll look just like this. I did a couple ahead of time. Okay, so we'll put that aside. Now to put these on the cake, it's the same process, except this time so that I don't have to fiddle with these any more than necessary and chance breaking them, even though I could piece them together. This time, I'm gonna start in this front of the cake again, and I'm just gonna use my water brush, and I'm gonna brush maybe a quarter to an eighth of an inch of water up the side of the cake. It's better to do less and add a little bit more afterwards if you need to. And I'm just going to place that right in the front, right up against the cake. And that's my little rose border. And we'll do one here. I don't need a whole piece this time, because I want to come right around to the middle of the back. So that's how you would do the rose border. And I would repeat the same exact process for the bottom of this tier. So once you have all your borders done, then your cake is basically decorated. Now we just need to pearlize some of these, make them pop, sort of get the, the details of the lace mold showing. And then we're gonna put a bottom ribbon and we're gonna add the flowers.